technically, I have already done the introduction for this video two days ago <laughs> when this update was supposed to come out. However, there was a little bit of a problem. The developers forgot to upload the cars. Um, it says I own it, but they forgot to put the cars in the game. <laughs> in today's video, we're going to check out the brand new update and the brand new DLC. I'm going to show you everything new in the game. Why don't we try the drift camera? If I pause the game, go into the settings, and then HUD? I think it's going to be under HUD. I'm looking for drift, drift camera. Drift camera on. Okay. Whoa. Whoa. I'm not moving the camera at all. Yo, that's like buttery smooth. It shows you where the car is going, not what's directly in front of it. Handbrake it through. Hey, it's not bad. It's not bad, boys. All of these things are new. A light blue inflatable skull, a yellow inflatable skull. You can make all of the spooky maps that you want to. And a dragon. <laughs> it's the mariachi man. All right, let's go check out the new car. Nicely done, old me. Before we get too far into this, though, the developers hooked me up with some codes for the super speed car pack. And today we are giving them away over on the the AR12 Discord server. All you need to do, join the Discord server, find the giveaway, and click participate. And in a couple of days, we're going to announce a winner, and you'll get a free code for the car pack, if you're lucky. Today, we're going to check out two of the cars in this new car pack, give them a go, give them a thumbs up or a thumbs down, and then tomorrow, we're going to do the same thing, but with the other two remaining cars. I'm going to let you guys decide what we drive first. Can you guys vote for the elemental? Because I have some really good fun facts about it that I really want to share with you. Please rig this for the elemental. No, no, no. You saw nothing. Uh, cool. All right. The Porsche 718 takes it. Lovely choice, lads. The reason the GT4 RS is so impressive and so expensive, we'll come to that in a second, is because this thing finally answered the prayers of Porsche fans from the past 20 or so years. <laughs> we will not forget you skip the Golf, Nicholas. I don't know what you're talking about. Not just any Porsche 911 engine, though. This is a GT3 engine, a naturally aspirated flat six engine that puts out 500 horsepower. It's mid-engine, so the weight distribution is fantastic. It is an incredible car with arguably an even more impressive price tag. You can build one of these for $200,000 Canadian. $213,000 to be exact. However, you can build a 911 GT3 for $231,000. I don't know if it's just me, but I think if you have $200,000 to spend on a car, you could probably afford an extra $20,000. Instead of getting a Cayman, you could get a 911, and then you don't need to be embarrassed and tell people you own a fancy Cockster. I don't know if that's just me. That's probably a hot take. Since we've got this super impressive engine and this beautiful looking car, let's see what upgrades we can do to it. So we do have an engine swap. We've got the three 3.8 liter flat six twin turbo. That's a GT2 RS engine, no? We'll leave the stock engine in for now. I think I like the way it is. We'll also leave it rear wheel drive for now. I think we'll probably do two builds on this thing. What if we twin turbo our GT3 engine though? Then we've got, oh, oh, that actually looks good. So the developers gave us this front splitter that doesn't actually change like any of the bodywork. It just adds on these little canards. I like it. Anyways, for now, now I'm going to leave it stock. We'll come back to that option in a second. And oh, moving on. This thing's on semi-slick tires, bone stock. Are you kidding me? I think I'm actually going to downgrade the tires. I'm going to go down to rally tires. So then we can get some more upgrades on it. Let's upgrade the tire width, for example, to give us a little bit more grip. And we've got some engine spacers. They are minuscule, though. If I wanted to be disappointed by something size, I would call up Nathan. We have rally suspension and drift suspension for the GT4. How about some weight reduction? Remove five. 500 pounds out of the thing and then just get a little bit of horsepower from an air filter and an exhaust 767 horsepower 2600 pounds what if i go for like a lime green though kind of steal that paint color from a gt3 rs and then give it 
Are you shitting me? The only way to get a carbon fiber hood is to use one of the pre-made colors. No, 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 you're joking. Uh-oh. <laughs> How good is the GT4 RS? Probably a more important question for this moment in time. Is it better than a GT3 RS? I'm just gonna restart. Thank you. Much better. Oh, look at the slide. It gets like the perfect amount of slide through the corner. Look at it. The rear end just comes out just when you're starting to push it that little bit too hard and probably overcooking it. I don't often get this feeling playing Forza Horizon 5. What the? Somebody made an AR-12 Thrustmaster NASCAR? Who did this? Whoever made that, nicely done. I've, I've never seen that before. I don't usually say this too often when I'm playing Forza Horizon 5. It genuinely feels like I'm driving a real car, though, with actual consequences. You can feel the rear end step out on you, and you know if you keep doing what you're doing, you're gonna spin out, you're gonna crash. And a lot of the time, you don't get sensations like that while playing this game, if you ask me. It's like, you've got to actually think about driving the car. I think I like it a lot. It's weird having this steering wheel on the right-hand side, though. I don't know why the developers would choose to put it on the wrong side of the car. It's literally butter on the road. It's incredible. Where did the AI go? It's such a good car. Before we jump over to the next car, though, I think I want to do one more build with this. Should we A, do a fully upgraded GT3, sorry, GT2 RS engine swap race car, or, or do we take it off road? That could be sick. I'm down. I like it. Picasso. <laughs> engine swap in all wheel drive on. Then I'm gonna go for some off-road race tires. Then I need maximum thickness for some chunky boys. I do apologize. I do apologize. I do apologize. Dino Nuggies. This is gonna be one of the fastest off-road cars in the world. A very rainy day out in Mexico for our next race using this thing. What a beautiful car. Oh my god. Look at the grip. The grip is insane. Boy, there is a big variety of builds that you can do with it. Like, jeez. Jeez. Whoa. Okay, that was like the best 10 seconds of my driving I have ever had in this game. <laughs> that was so sick. Off-road Porsche with a Rothson's paint job. I don't think it gets much better than this. Technically, this car now has the longest car name in car history because it's the Porsche Cayman 718 GT4 RS. GT2 RS. Rothson's. Vysic Package. Special Edition. <laughs> oh yeah, UK spec with the steering wheel on the incorrect side. It's a, it's a long name, okay? Now that we've driven this thing for a little while, we've done two different builds with it. Thumbs up, thumbs down, or somewhere in the middle. I would say three quarters of the way to thumbs up. And the only reason it's not a full thumbs up is because I can't paint the stupid hood. And now I know what you're saying. Nick, you could just put vinyls on the hood. Yes, but I lack skills. And I can't do that. So that's why it's about there instead of there. What do we drive next in the super speed car pack? I think I really want to go elemental RP1. 280 horsepower, 350 foot pounds of torque, and it only weighs 1,400 pounds. Elemental, I wonder if I could actually find it on the car. Elemental is made by a guy named John. Where's John's name? Johnny Boy was an old McLaren engineer, and he left McLaren in 2012 to make this company. As you can see, for this car, the steering wheel is on the correct side. If you live in one of those funny countries that drives on the incorrect side of the road, Elemental actually has a very cool feature. They designed it in such a way where within two to three hours, you can remove the steering wheel and all of the steering components to swap the steering wheel to the other side of the car. That's a properly little cool fun fact. I, I wonder what would happen if you only move the steering wheel though and not the pedals because then you would steer and your passenger would do the braking. If any of the AR-12 viewers 
have an elemental RP1. Try it out and then get back to me. Anyways, let's see what engine swaps we have. We've got our little Ford EcoBoost engine. We can swap in a 1.6 liter straight four turbo rally engine. At, ooh. And an Ariel Atom V8. We can go all... I just... I, I guess we're gonna go full send. Full send. Ariel Atom. All wheel drive. All of Twitch chat's yelling at me to look at the rear wing. No shot. Chassis mounted rear wing. Every single one of you was making fun of me when I said I like the elemental. I told you it's cool. I think we're actually going to have an X-Class build on our hands here. Get some engine spacers. That looks really good. No way. Look at this thing on drift suspension. We might need to turn it into a little drift car. And then we upgrade the horsepower. Come on. Come on, get to X-Class. It's X-Class, baby! 775 horsepower in a car that only weighs 1,500 pounds. I love how it's got carbon fiber exposed doors. Like, that looks awesome on there. Hey, and look at that. They actually allow you to change the color of your hood. Okay, now we're racing the big supercar hypercar things. We're about to need all of that horsepower and... Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, the downforce works. Not even a break. Not even thinking of breaking. Imagine buying one of those plebby KTM crossbow things when you could have bought one of these. Imagine the G-forces. Hold on, wait, you don't have to imagine. I can show you the G-forces. How many Gs are we going to make through this corner? This is going to be the big tell. Three Gs. Four Gs in the corner. <laughs> That's like almost Formula One car level of cornering. I think what we learned is the elemental is scary fast. Now that I think about it, this is actually kind of close to a Formula One car. The only thing a Formula One car has more than this is just like wider tires and more downforce. Maybe a little bit more horsepower. I think the Formula One cars are pushing like 900, 1000 horsepower now around there. This is kind of like a Formula Two, Formula Three car. What a cool little car. I can't believe how easy it is to drive. The fact that it's still pointing in the right direction is kind of mind blowing. Four G's through the final corner not even a lift through the corner and across the line we are going to do one more bill what happens if you take a formula john car and take it drifting that's a question nobody's asked before as always i am always here to answer the questions that nobody has we're gonna keep the big rear wing for the simple fact that it's cool and that's about it all right and in Snap in, in, wait, 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 I'm doing this wrong, chat. I do apologize. And in. Oh, let's try out this drift cam properly. Oh my God, this feels so weird. So weird. You kind of get disconnected for the drift cam for how much angle you actually have. It's like, am I safe right now? Am I not safe right now? Can I push the car more? It's quite difficult to tell. I mean, I'm sure you'll build up like, you'll, you'll build up the more and more you drive with the drift camera. Like it's definitely going to take some getting used to before you can start like really sending it with this camera view. What a cool car. What a cool camera. That is awesome. <laughs> So cool. That is a huge thumbs up. From a car I've never heard of to a car that I absolutely love in less than a week. Well done, John. 